What? Why would you do that? Huh? Huh? Right there, white man. You colonizer. You land stealing son of a bitch. Today. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god, what is that? This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't. Jet, Turbo, and Rebel. I could have been Turbo? I told Donald. I wrote it down in case no one could understand him. I could have been Turbo! You know how you've been wondering, like, when all your manifestations were going to come in? Well, I have a message for you. It's coming this weekend. Something big is going to happen this weekend that changes the game. And guess what? Your ancestors and spirit guides are like literally up there dancing and singing right now because they're so happy that you got to this point. I'm happy that you got to this point. You're doing great. Keep going. You're about to have another breakthrough. Hello, universe. I would like a partner. Are you saying that because you're lonely? No. Are you saying it because you want to kiss someone? No. I just want, I want a partner. Well, this is no longer our realm of expertise. Why? Why? What do you mean, why? Sorry, kiddo. I'm gonna be single for the rest of my life. Reading Liver King's physique. Arms look well developed, super lean and really vascular, so I'm gonna say about 9.5. Shoulders also look really rounded and, you know, just capped off, so I'm going to say probably about 9.4. Chest is probably one of his strong points, just really full, um, so I'm going to say probably about 9.6. Back is really thick. Um, the only thing I would say is that his lats look a decent amount more developed than his mid-back, um, so I'm going to say about 9.3. Abs are crazy, super pronounced. They just, like, pop right out, so I'm going to say about 9.7. And compared to everything else, his legs look like a decent amount less developed um, than his upper body, so I'm going to say about 8.8. So average out, his physique comes out to a 9.4. Guys, tag Liver King down below. Nope, I'm not just using random angles to make it all work, and here's a few examples as to why 30 degrees is significant. Not only is 30 degrees one of the fundamental foundations to the very basics of geometry, but also with how we divide up time. 
Here I have the seed of life that also creates the star of David that divides this circle up into 12 equal sections, kind of like the face of a clock. Hmm. This is also how they divide up the zodiac, but the angle in between each hour equals 30 degrees. Also, the northern wall of the Great Pyramid sits at 30 degrees from the equator of the planet, and if we were to draw a line around the planet at this 30 degrees, we would then find the great circle of ancient sites that wraps around the planet at a 30 degree angle from the equator. If we were to take the face of this clock and expand it so it's two meters in diameter, the length of the arc of one hour then equals an Egyptian royal cubit that when applied to a pendulum also gives us one second of time with each swing. What exactly does a dream catcher do? Thank you for asking that. I just realized that none of my videos address specifically that. <laughs> so I would explain it simply by comparing it to the internet. It's like when you're sleeping, you get connected to the dream internet. And just like the internet, it can get infected with different things. It can do different things to like corrupt your download. It can make your uh, stream lag. So it's like a firewall antivirus for your dream internet. It keeps negative things from being able to infect your dream stream. And what's even crazier is I've been doing this for over a year and a half and I have well over a thousand dream catchers creating a vast network all over Turtle Island now. I guess you could say it also gives you an IP address for the spirits to be able to find you in your dreams. So it has to be made properly utilizing the spirits and ceremony for it to actually work. And my other videos about it talk about that. Hola mi amor, bienvenido a tu casa. Te estaba esperando. Mira, tengo una pregunta para ti. ¿Quién eres tú? Para mí, tú eres una persona fuerte. Para mí, tú eres una persona que sabe cómo y de qué manera vas a cumplir sus metas. Para mí, tú eres una persona que tiene un, un protección encima de sus ancestros que no se compara con nada. Para mí... Tú tienes tus secretos que nadie tiene que saber si te vas a ahogar en un vaso de agua o vas a construir una piscina. Pero como quiera trae una toalla. Te amo, te amo. Yo te deseo lo mejor. Si nadie te lo he dicho, soy y estoy y siempre seré orgulloso de ti. There's an ancestor who really wants to reach out to you with a message. If you feel misunderstood and different from the rest of your family, that's because you've been assigned a greater purpose. You've been chosen to break the generational curses and bring healing into the family. You have your ancestors by your side watching over you. You're highly protected. You've been through a lot. You felt unappreciated and alone. You've probably been the black sheep in the family because you have been chosen to bring in change. The path may seem like a lonely path, but it is worth it because you are a healer and fulfilling your soul's purpose will bring you lots of happiness. I can see that you are a creative person. Your ancestors are encouraging you to start sharing your gifts. They have lit a spark in you. So you may feel more inclined towards creativity. You'll have lots of luck in exploring your gifts. Whatever you're good at, share it with the world. If you see a white bird, that's a sign that your ancestor is near you. To find out more messages from your ancestors, book a reading with me. Link in my bio. <laughs> Baby, I would be very, very careful okay and I want you to look me dead in my eyes as you can through this phone be very careful because voodoo is not some of this little carrying on where we go out and we get some herbs and we get some crystals and all kinds of things like that yeah voodoo is very powerful. Don't go messing with anybody. Don't provoke people. Me, you're not going to provoke. Do you honestly think that I would waste my energy and time and my spirit's time 
to invoke them to prove something to you? Hmm. Not me. But I'm not the majority. Be careful with which you know not what you speak. Hmm. Where did our ancestors come from? Y'all, watch this. In the Bible, the Western Hemisphere is part of the earth, and our ancestors are the direct descendants of the original male and females created in the image of us with the earth. Genesis 1 2 6, 1 2 8. Us represents a duality as God and Spirit of God, and the waters and the soil called earth is the base. According to the Bible, the people created by the duality, us, is the image of earth soil, have dominion over the earth. Earth females and males, according to the Bible, were given the right to be fruitful and multiply with earth, not Adam and Eve. Due to the simple fact, once our race with America was discovered, some Europeans considered our ancestors the lost tribes of Israel with the planet earth. Facts. The word Israel means is real, means the heart, the foundation, and the root. It's about to make somebody mad. In translation, the lost tribes of Israel means the lost bloodlines of the creator earth. <clears throat> However, our ancestors did not see themselves as lost Jews, Hebrews, or Israelites living in America. They saw themselves as America. All the indigenous bloodline races created by the females of our planet Earth occupied every inch of Earth at one time. The only people who lived in caves are the people of Eurasia, today called Europe. European and Caucasian people's skin looks like the color inside caves. At one time, was a very small population from mainly the Caucasian mountains, caves of Eurasia. From my research, the people from Europe are the direct descendants from Adam and Cain and a no, a no, I don't know. They are not the people made in the image of God or the spirit of God or in Genesis as us. The male and female duality that look like the soil called Earth. The planet is not connected to them directly. They are an in integration into the human species with the planet created by the Lord God, not God. According to the doctrine in the King James Version of the Bible, Genesis 2. Hey, and what's going on? Quick question. Can we start acknowledging that slavery never really existed and begin calling it what it was? Surprise war. One, you don't castrate slaves. Why? Because they can't make you more slaves. Two, you don't separate slaves from their families because now they have no loyalty to you or any reason to remain working for you. Three, do you know who you do castrate and separate from their families? Prisoners of war. In 1492, Christopher Columbus didn't discover anything. He was doing reconnaissance for Spanish, the Portuguese, and the Roman Catholic Church, specifically Pope Alexander VI. Once Christopher Columbus's reconnaissance was complete, Pope Alexander VI declared the papal bull intercaitera, which means among other works. The intercaitera, or the papal bull in 1493, gave the Portuguese and the Spanish the right to exterminate the aboriginal peoples of the Americas because they were considered savages because they were not Christian faith. This is the doctrine of discovery. See, it says the papal bull intercaitera, or among other works, issued by Pope Alexander VI, we'll get back to him in a second, May 4th, 1493, played a central role in the Spanish conquest of the New World, not discovery, but watch this. The document supported Spain's strategy to ensure its exclusive rights to the land discovered by Columbus the previous year. First of all, Columbus did not discover America. Cristobal Colon is a cullen who was one of the one percenters of the world. When you realize that Christopher Columbus's real name is not Christopher Columbus, but Cristobal Colon, a.k.a. Cristoforo Cullen, that is the point in history when you realize the Cullen family and the Colon family are the same family. On one hand, the Colon family is a prominent family that everything Colombian is named after, even the District of Columbia that owns the land deed to the corporation that is the United States of America. But on the other hand... Changing their names as to not be detected throughout history, as is their modus operandi, the Cullen family has now become the Collins bloodline of the 13 families. Each one of these families has a position or purpose inside of their organization. The Cullen family is only called when there is a mass culling necessary. What is a culling, you ask? The reduction of a wild animal or barbarous nation population by selective slaughter. Selective slaughter. Hmm. So knowing this, why would Pope Alexander VI, the Pope, the holy man of the world, why would he enlist such a sadistic bloodline? Who is Pope Alexander VI? Hmm. Pope Alexander VI, 
a.k.a. Rodrigo de Borgia, of the Borgia bloodline. Hmm, why does that sound familiar? It's not like they changed the face of all history or anything. Hmm, where have I heard that name before? Doesn't he have a son named Cesar? <gasps> Pope Alexander VI is the father of white Jesus. Lord.